what's going on people it's been a while I haven't done a video in what almost two weeks something like that but been busy and today I have a question for you what is your process for success because you know I touched on it earlier on my renegade Facebook page and some real important lessons have come very clear to me this year it is not how much your course cost it's not even if the information is good or not I know it's like whoa 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 Glendon it's got to be good no it doesn't really matter price points doesn't matter tools they don't matter it is your system that matters because for years it has been driving me crazy why I would have someone who will take one of my courses, read a book, and do really, really well, and then I'll have other people who would struggle or drop out and couldn't hang. And I've had some really smart people not be able to do my courses. And I've had some people who are self promised that they weren't that smart, but they were able to do my courses and read the books and get benefit. And I was like, what the hell is it? And I started to inquire and I, you know a lot of people I've talked to on the phone I've asked some kind of crazy questions thanks for participating and I've nailed it down to what kind of system do you personally have for success and this goes back to do you know how to study it's not about money it's not about being connected it's not about uh, it's none of these things because if you have a process for success you can get connected you can easily get connected if you have a process for success if you have a methodology some of these other things and have you ever thought about how you do what you do because frequently when I'm in Facebook groups I am the contrarian I was like well you know and everyone's like well hey you know I'm getting these results and everything and then I start to ask questions. Are you doing X? Are you doing Y? Are you doing Z? Are you doing D, E, F, and G? And when as I ask these questions, it becomes clear that these people are doing something different than I, what I'm doing. And that's why we're all using the same words, but we have different definitions based upon our experiences. And it's really, really interesting because some things that I've done recently which don't have a lot of people as part of the mix are doing amazingly well and I'm not I'm talking about a handful of people but these folks I've been choosing I've been picking them because I've got a process for success and if I take the right person because it's not gonna work for everybody and that's just a dream that I have let go. It, it's just not, I don't care if, how bad you want it unless you are going to make some fundamental changes in who you are and how you do things. You can have the best mentor. You can have the best teacher information. You can have connections. You can have money and you will still fail. It's amazing, and I think it is this system of success, this process is the reason that you can have someone like Arthur Blank go from virtually nothing to becoming a billionaire, and then you can have people who are born rich like Donald Trump and not have the impact of an Arthur Blank, you know, who literally had a head start over Arthur Blank, and Arthur Blank is richer and in my opinion, just my opinion, a better human being. But that's neither here nor there. The thing is that process, uh, the same process that a Travis who created Uber, or the same process that a Jeff Bezos who created Amazon. And the, and the thing with Amazon is it was created out of nothing. You know, I'm one to give props where props is due. It was created out of nothing. People laughed at the man. Folks mocked him. Some folks still do. Uh, I look at the individual success, and I think uh, Amazon's company will continue to grow. 
also think that some other person with a system for success is going to come in and they're going to challenge them. Everyone gets challenged at some point. I don't care who you are. And I look at it and there are a lot of people who want to quit their jobs and because they hate their jobs, but they have no pathway, no process, no success. I have talked more people out of quitting their jobs than I can count because I am in this space of entrepreneurship. I know what it's like to start a company. I know what it's like to start several companies. I know what it's like to work your ass off and not make any money for months. I haven't hit that, make, work my ass off and not make money for years. I haven't hit that threshold and I don't plan on it. But I know that to launch something, you're gonna have to put forth so much effort and time and energy and enthusiasm that the average person who doesn't have this system of success is just going to say, fuck it. I'm not doing that. I'm going to get a job and then I'm going to be miserable and complain to my friends about it on Facebook all day long. So here's the system. Number one, you got to be fundamentally honest with who the fuck you are. And that's hard because you could build a successful company that is 100% against who you are as a person and that will destroy your soul. You may have money, you may have the accumulants of success, but it will destroy your soul. And you could be that person like Kurt Cobain committing suicide or on drugs or having an alcohol problem because you're doing something that is incongruent with who you are. And that happens a lot because if the money's there, it's worth doing. And I say, no, it's not. When I started this YouTube channel and this writing career and internet marketing, my goal was with the universe, if I can make 50 G's a year, I'm good. I had no grand or over the top expectations. I had no, let's see, extracurricular illusions of what success was. I studied the market. I knew that it was hard making a living as a writer. And I just went for it. So I was really real. And you might be a person who wants to make earrings and you handcrafted earrings they, they make your heart leap for joy you, you're really good at it and the marketplace may say hey for you that's 80 grand a year but you're happy or the marketplace may say oh 40 grand a year but you're happy then you go ahead and start selling some stuff you don't believe in you don't want to be part of and the marketplace says we like that we're going to give you two three million a year i just don't think that the money is always worth it i've never been like that and i don't think that i've really clearly communicated because i think you should build businesses make money because you need economics to have freedom in the united states of america i don't care who you are you need economics but how much i've never professed to you know, I've never wanted to be a billionaire. That's never been my thing. And I've never, quote, wanted to be the millionaire for the millionaire's sake. Because there's a lot of people saying, hey, I'm a millionaire and I'm going to teach you for free. Every time I hear those statements, I start, my inner kid starts giggling all day long. Because no one, no one invests hours and hours and hours of time, money, and personal investment in creating content to teach you for free without an agenda. Nobody does that. And anyone that says that, they're fucking lying to you. But I have always wanted to be wealthy. And wealthy is your money, your assets work for you when you're not working. That is something that I've always wanted. And you don't even have to be, quote, a millionaire to have that kind of lifestyle. You can own $800,000 worth of real estate and say that real estate is owned outright you have no mortgages and that real estate gives you not you know after expenses taxes insurance gives you like nine G's a month that's hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year sitting on your ass that's a good lifestyle because you've got good money coming in and you've got the time to enjoy and do other stuff whereas you build something you don't like and you make way more money you gotta say hey what's your life force worth i mean that's something you have to ask yourself what is it worth 
but here here's a few tips on how to create a system of success the second thing you have to understand who you are not who people want you to be but who you really are because the world is really strange that if you're authentic in the beginning people will like shit on you and like who's that crazy motherfucker but as you continue to push on a lot of people who used to hate your ass will start to love you uh, they will start to appreciate you and they'll start to cheer for you and become supporters it's strange and you know it's not an easy road it's not an easy road it, it may be it may take years for that change to happen but i've seen it like take howard stern he was vilified all of a sudden he's on a television show people love him oh that's howard this guy was vilified but he's himself that's who he is it's like you know what i want to do a radio show and talk to strippers I want to do a radio show and talk to porn stars. I want to do these things that entertain me on my radio show. And he did it, and he got rewarded over and over again. You look at uh, Elon Musk. He wanted to go to space. Dude almost went broke trying to do that. But that's what he wanted to do. So be brutally honest with who you are, what you want to do, and how you want to live. Because that energy doesn't disappear like the energy of assuming other people's success for yourself you know it, it sticks with you. you you sleep with it you wake up with it it just doesn't go anywhere so that's really your power source who you are the third thing you're gonna have to become comfortable with failure that's part of the system you're gonna try something out you will have an idea and you're like, man, this is going to kill. And you put it out in the marketplace. And the marketplace is like, oh, no, nah, we don't like that. You will have more losers. You will have more ideals. You will have to euthanize than you will that will make it. I mean, that's just reality. So you're going to have to become comfortable. And when I say comfortable, not like you're happy that you lost. Not throwing parties. But, oh, that didn't work out. Let's do this. That's what I mean by comfortable. Not by giving up but really looking at it what it is as a feedback loop. The fourth thing that you have to do to put your system, of, your, your system of success together, your process is learn to appreciate small things. One of the things that stops people, and I had a client going through this, is what I call the home run mentality. There are people who have businesses that are doing 60,000 a year, 80, 100,000, 150,000 a year, and they are brutally unhappy because it's not a million dollar a year business yet. I was talking to a guy at my detail shop the other day. He, we just had this conversation about business and stuff. This guy's had his uh, detail shop for 21 years. 21 years, he has a base of subscribers reoccurring customers and he put together something like for you to have a business in the same location for 20 years is an amazing feat and in the beginning he didn't make a lot of money but he said you know i was paying my mortgage my kids were in private school we didn't have a lot left over all that but i kept at it now money rolls in but he said it was about a 10 year period for him to get over that hump so you got people who cannot appreciate the success they have because it's not the success that they want. So they would literally throw the bath water, out, the baby out with the bath water. Like, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna do something else. And you gotta appreciate small stuff. I appreciated all of those people in 2009 who bought my book the first month. It was only like, in October, it was only like $560. I was so grateful because I was like, wow, I wrote this book. It's got issues and people have paid me money for it. Oh, man, if I can do this with this, what I can do in the future. You got other folks who would have given up, who would have uh, fell prey to the criticism. And I get people who criticize me all day. You should speak this way. You should do this topic. You shouldn't talk about this. Uh, you should do this. You should jump on this trend. You should talk all day long now what's really common about all of these what you should do people not one of those motherfuckers is doing shit with their life 
that is the thing that cracks me up because see i read the comments and then i'll go look and see what they're doing with their channel i will go to, i will creep down their facebook page and they most of them ain't do, like shit all of them that i've creeped up on ain't doing nothing but they're full of opinions but they don't have any accomplishments of success now what this is is a subconscious level of trying to tear down someone who's doing something and when i say subconscious they don't realize what they're doing because they just think that they're trying to be helpful there there's just something in there and like I, i've said this before i don't have haters i just have people who hate how i make them feel i don't have haters they're like look at this mm. They hate how I make them feel because every time they see me doing these videos and all this other stuff, riding around and quote my, I, I will talk about this because this was coming, riding around in my $2,000 car. Uh, you know, I get a lot of comments about this car. It's an Audi S4. It's a 2004 model, right? Use this sucker's 15 grand because they don't make that many. But I looked at that and it's like, what does that have to do with the price of beef? And I started laughing. This person, whoever he or she was, because I don't know, because most of these folks are cowards and they don't put any content up. They don't, you don't know if they're, you know, frequently don't know if they're men or women because they hide behind their, and they hide and they throw rocks and they hide. And I was like, wow, I am really fucking with this person's mind because, see, this is the thing. The cars and why I change them, all the cars I wanted as a kid, one by one, I'm driving them. You know, if I like them, I keep them. If I don't, I get rid of them. It's just my little thing. But you get people who are so unhappy and so full of, who don't have any gratitude for anything that they're just miserable and they want you to be miserable too. Uh, I had a troll, a major troll who attacked this channel, who went out and recruited other trolls who actually ended up saying things that were categorically untrue about me and I had to make a decision. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna fight them. They still say stuff. What I did was I increased my game, I put out more content, I got more fans, grew the channel, made more money while they were spending time and energy trying to fuck with me. I ignored them. And it, it's really interesting because, and this is a lesson, if there's somebody publicly or in your your town that you really just can't stand and they've done nothing to you you don't know them you really need to look at yourself you really need to understand why what they're doing is causing you so much misery because it's a hundred percent your problem like you know all of these things that are going socially uh with the men marrying men, women marrying women, uh, transgender uh, issues with racial inequality, police brutality. You got people who are mad that folks who are being put upon are saying, hey, you know, this is a problem. They're like, shut up. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to see you. Just shut up. Yet what these people are doing really doesn't impact your life one way or another. It really does. On the day that it, it does nothing to you. But I think many folks cannot get past their lack of cowardice because when they see someone else showing courage because it does take courage to speak out it does take courage to act it takes courage to make a statement that they see the coward that's in them and it makes them mad because they know they don't have courage that's a problem for a lot of people they would rather that you submit your desires and who you are on that lower level so they can be comfortable again versus looking at you excel and soar and they being uncomfortable because you're making them realize that they're not living their best life and they're not living a better version of themselves but it's not your fault it's theirs but they don't take ownership so that's pretty much it you know that's just some on top of my dome and with that i'll see you in the next video